I specialize in a field known as mass spectrometry, where my focus is on identifying markers for diagnosing diseases, such as cancer. A few years ago, I was tasked with improving our rate of protein quantification. That is, we want to find more proteins in your blood so we can better diagnose you when you go in for a checkup. The first thing I did is I assembled a three-person team. I hired a biologist, a chemist, and a physicist. The biologist, I made the team leader, tasked with telling the other two which proteins we should be looking for. The chemist is an expert on the actual structure of the proteins. She knows where in the blood they should appear so we could point our analyzer to them. The physicist is an expert on the actual analyzer, guaranteeing we get the most accurate and clean quantification possible. And together, we now find hundreds of more proteins, rare proteins, that we couldn't just a few years ago, and we're hoping to roll this out and hopefully scan millions of people. Now, there's a catch. Some of you may have guessed. There is no biologist, chemist, or physicist. Each of these are AI minds I have trained to do very specific subset of tasks that I could not do neither well enough, no one could do well enough, or as fast enough as they do. A paper from last year. Doctors using AI catch breast cancer more often than either does alone. And in the proposed AI-driven process, they found that nearly three-quarters of the screening studies didn't need to be reviewed by radiologists, while improving accuracy overall, MIT Tech Review. This is to say, at times, radiologists could be doing the work of four, and on the one-fourth that they're looking at, they could be doing their work better. I want to emphasize this is not an AI taking over all the jobs of the radiologist. This is an AI working with the radiologist, so you can get the best results possible. Maybe in the future, I'll give a talk on my actual work, but what I want to do today is instill in you the philosophies that go into making these deep models and, and take these methodologies for yourself. So, what is a model? A model is a mind or a tool that can be trained on data to make predictions. Okay? A few years ago, I wanted to know what breed my cat is, so I downloaded a bunch of cat pictures from the internet, I trained the model, and it told me it's a Turkish Angora. However, people other than me have bigger problems than cat pictures, and so to tackle these, you need, usually you need multiple minds with different skill sets coming together to answer such questions. Instead of thinking too big, if you break down your problem into smaller ones, like the human mind, for example, we know that specialized in one part to do language, some parts to do math. If you break down your problem into different tools and different pieces, you can better tackle the problems. It's kind of like uh, making a cake. If you have different ingredients, some are good, some are bad, but when they come together, they make something much more delicious than some of the parts. So how would we break down problems? Let's say you're in health science, okay, and your goal is to see how a drug would act on a human body. The first thing you can do is you can have one model okay, that analyzes the actual chemical structure of the molecule to say how is this going to act on people. Then you have a second model that actually looks at the, the patient's DNA to say this is how this drug's going to act on the patient, some sort of personalized medicine. That's breaking down a problem to two pieces. You're a climate scientist. You have one model that looks at the changes in Earth's temperature, and then you have a second model that looks at the, at the waves, the ocean currents. You get a nice view of the climate, right? Breaking them down makes it much more easily, easy to tackle and bring back together. And I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, most of you, if you take your work set, what you do in a day, and you break it down small enough, most of you can actually accomplish and tackle these tasks. Okay? Now, I've been going on about science, but what's important is most people aren't in science, and most day-to-day -day tasks don't require the stuff that I'm doing. These models are extremely powerful in everything that you do today. Half of the words I've said till now, over half, have been written by chatbots. And all the pictures you've seen till now, such as this one, and this one of someone working hard, were made by an image model. I didn't do anything. If you're trying to manage a team, time and output is extremely important, right? I need to be as clever as possible. I've effectively had both an artist and a writer producing content for me nonstop whenever I needed it. They allowed me to spend more time dreaming about what my talk wanted to be about and getting to other things that were more important. I personally believe that, at least imminently, these models aren't going to re replace the talents of great artists and writers and doctors, but they're going to supplement and enhance their capabilities so they can work even better. And also, it's going to push the boundaries of your own potential. What should you do when you go home today? First, you should become very familiar with all the new chatbots and image models that everyone is going to start using very soon to get ahead. Even if English is your first language, or it's not, the chatbots will help you write very succinct text and clean up your already pre-existing text. Okay? And then what you should do is ask, what in my day that I'm doing right now can I automize and make faster? So let's say you own, let's say you own a, a restaurant. Okay, 
what purchases do people make on which days? Maybe I can optimize which ingredients I buy and what I, what I put as a special. Do you own a website where you sell products? Which countries are visiting my, my page and what do they already most likely to buy? Let me advertise those, okay? In the early days of the internet, few people could have known how much it would have impacted all of us, okay? And those who fell behind were left struggling to catch up. Things are moving faster than ever before, and AI is leading this charge. Whether, whether you're uh, a businessman, a student, or just someone with dreams, don't fall behind. The world is not going to wait. You're alive at the inception of the next internet, the next electricity, as it starts to take off. Don't miss your chance, others won't. Thank you.